the people, the public, the consumers who are on Cellcom, DG, U Mobile, Unify, and yes, okay. uh, can now access 5G. Mm, now that um, the five telcos can offer 5G services, what can we expect? Okay, so at the moment, uh, as, as, as of 3rd of November, Four telcos are offering 5G on prepaid and postpaid. Mm. So YTL Communications, yes, 5G, they were the first. They were first to offer 5G since December last year. Mm-hmm. So you still have your your prepaid plan, which I think is still the best bank for Bakla if you're looking for 5G only. Yep. So that offers unlimited data, unlimited calls for 30 ringgit a month on prepaid. Mm-hmm. And then you have postpaid. So they also have these infinite plans. Unlimited 4G and 5G with no FUP. That's the main problem. It's no FUP. Mm-hmm. From 58 ringgit a month. No data and speed cap. Yes. Right? No FUP. So, because you know yeah. right now, right, uh, Telcos, you have you can opt for either or. You yeah. can have unlimited data but a speed cap yes. or limited data but no speed cap. Yes. So, on yes, infinite, it's unlimited everything. Yes. The only difference, the only thing that's limiting is the hotspot. So, the cheapest option, 58 ringgit, gets 10 gig of hotspot. The mm. next step, I think, is 88 ringgit with mm. like 40 gig of hotspot. I think 10 gigs of uh, tethering data is fine. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. So, but for me, I think still Bank of Obak is still the prepaid that they ring it because you get unlimited everything, including hotspot. Now the next question is, um, if so, if I'm on a if I'm on a five G phone and my five G phone can access a five G network and uh, from my telco, do I have to pay extra to access five G? Right now, it's uh, basically free as long as you have the right plans because um, most of the telcos they enable five G for selected plans. Like mm. for example, on Unify, let's start with Unify. Unify mm. Mobile, if you're on the unlimited. Postpaid the ultimate plan, mm. uh, which is now going for like seven nine ringgit a month or mm. fifty nine ringgit a month if you go for contract, mm. um, that can access five G. Yep. On prepaid, the unified bear bus plan, the one with which the credit will never die. That's <laughs> what I keep using. Yep. So if you buy the monthly pass, the mm. thirty five ringgit monthly pass, which gives you unlimited LTE, mm. after you purchase that pass, they give you an option to buy. And add, add on. Add on yep. for free, 5G mm. pass. So it's add on for free, but you got to activate that add on. Yes. Yep. It's because the the system is configured in a way that later they can just put a price. Yeah. So they're just, I guess, testing that, okay, if you are on prepaid and you want to try 5G, mm-hmm. just, just Buy uh, this pass first. activate the add, add on, but it's free. Yeah. Uh, and you can access 5G. Yeah, so that's 35 ringgit a month. Yeah. Yep. On Cellcom? So Cellcom, they only, okay, Cellcom is different. So unlike Yes and Unifar Mobile where they offer unlimited 5G, Cellcom is only en- enabling 5G for their high-speed data plans. Mm. Plans that have fixed quota. So this this includes a Cellcom Mega 80 to me- Mega 80 Lightning, mm. 80 to 188. So those plans have fixed quota, like I think like 50, 60 gigs, mm-hmm. depending on which plan you're on. So if you use 5G, um, it, it just uses your existing quota. Mm. Okay, here's okay, okay. Th- here's the thing that we had we've been discussing, right? So 5G right now from DNB. So the supplier that supplies 5G and the data that comes with the 5G network is supplying to the telcos for free. Yeah, until 31st December. Until 31st December. So basically two months free. Yeah, so free flow. Like, you can just use as much as you want. Now, yep. you mentioned in Cellcom, uh, my data utilization on 5G, despite it being provided free from the tel- from the supplier. network provider, mm-hmm. from the supplier, is uh, is deducted. Yes, um, isn't that wrong? That's like, a, it's like okay, yeah. you give me something free, I take it and I, hey, I sell it out. Yeah, in a way, yeah, that's the thing we're talking about. Like, but shouldn't it be free, right? Yeah. But in fact, you're using the quota, so which yeah. means that okay, let's say if a customer, right? Okay, I have a plan with twenty gigs of data. Mm. If I'm a normal customer on four G, yeah, I use twenty gig of data from your network. Yeah, fair. That's I pay, fine. I find yeah, because, because that's your infra. Yes, you've paid for that upfront. Yeah, and yeah, it's fair. I use your network, so I pay for the service that rendered from your network. Yeah, yeah. But if I'm on five G, which mm. is supplied by someone else, mm. and they're offering for free, why deducting the quota? Which means that you're monetizing whatever that you're getting for free. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah, so in a way, yes, they are making money from the free access. And the only operator that's doing this right now is Cellcom. And also U-Mobile. So we and what does DNB have to say about it? Yeah, so which are the DNB? So they don't want to d- discuss about this. So uh. essentially, they say that that's a conversation between um, the, telco? the telco and the customer. So basically, it's like the, tel- the telco sign. Mm. So what DNB is committed to do is I give you the access to a network. Yep. And right now, it's free until 31st December, end of story. So what you do with it? Is up to the telcos. Yeah, I think I think the NBA has taken the correct approach now because I think the public and everybody else shouldn't shouldn't expect the NBA to be the police. Yep. When it comes to things like this, correct. Uh, I, I think they should have uh, a free market a- as much as possible. Yep. 
And I think what they're doing is fine. It's like, okay, and then the consumer can think, hey, if your operator is charging you for utilization that's supposed to be free, mm-hmm. then, you know, you need to consider looking at other operators. Mm-hmm. And I think that that develops uh, healthy competition and drives to make services better. Okay, so we covered the postpaid section of uh, what Cellcom is offering in terms of 5G. What about the po- uh, prepaid customers? Uh, similar as well. It's only offered for the, the high speed data plans. The high speed data plans. Uh-huh. So it's only available on uh, the prepaid 35 and 45, but it's only for the high speed data plans. So yeah. 35, I think it's like 30 gigs and then 45 is 40 gigs because for the same price, you can mm. go for the unlimited plan with mm. the codes. So mm. there's, there's speed cap at 3 6 megabits. Mm. So you must only get it on the high speed plans. So here's another thing. Yep. Um, I, and also another reminder for everyone out there mm. who gets too excited about 5G, right? Yep. Because normally the first thing you do is... Speed test. Speed test. A lot of people don't think that speed test takes a lot of data. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, that's the misconception. Yeah, yeah, because I think 4G, it wasn't that much, right? Yep, so yep. you don't feel it. Uh-huh. But for 5G, you need to be aware. Because we did a test and then we, we, we look at the usage. So we, we mm. run Ookla speed test. Mm-hmm. You check the history of the results so you can mm. see how much data is consumed for downloads and uploads. Yep. So it, and then this morning I tried again, right? I got I managed to get like 1.4 gigabits per second download. Uh-huh. And it consumed like two point, almost 2.4 gigs wow. for one test. So imagine mm. you have like a 20 gig plan, right? Yep. You just run like 10 speed tests and you're, you're done. done. Yeah, you're <laughs> done for the for the day. Yes. Yeah. So advice, uh, if, you, if you are already accessing the 5G network and you want to show off your 5G speeds, right? The higher the speeds are, the more data is being consumed to test that speed because the system is just pushing that data to, to get to get the response back. Yeah, correct. So uh, try not to speed test so much if you're on 5G. Okay, so now we move to U-Mobile. Yeah, so U-Mobile, um, similar to Cellcom as well, they only offer on their high-speed data plan. So it's mm. on U38, 68, and 98 plans. Mm-hmm. So um, similar to Cellcom. So if you've got the right plan, mm. you've got the right coverage, the right device, you can start using immediately. Mm-hmm. Uh, no SIM change required. Mm. And then on prepaid, that's the 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 sketchy part. Uh. So on prepaid, it's offered on the U twenty five U thirty five plan. Mm. These are the you know unlimited code plans, unlimited yeah, yeah, plans yeah, yeah, yeah. with speed cap. So yeah, the speed yeah. cap like three megabits, six megabits. Mm. So to access five G, yep. because what's the point of having five G if you speed cap, right? Yep. So to use five G on these prepaid plans, right, mm. you need to activate a speed booster, <laughs> which you can only activate one hour per day. Oh man. Yeah, so which means in 24 hours, you, let's say you want to experience 5G, you activate the speed booster and then you psh, speed boost for one hour. Yeah. I hate plans like that. I hate plans that force me to like manage my internet data. I mean, internet is ubiquitous. It's like energy. Yep. It shouldn't, I shouldn't have to decide like, okay, this one hour, I'm going to speed yep. boost yep. and do what? I mean... It's like, that's why like this the 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 probably the, the worst 5G prepaid plan. Yeah. And I, I think you mobile should just come up with it. Give me this one unlimited plan. Like, give me like 30 just or 40 give me ringgit. Just add-on. Like, yeah. like, like, you know how Un- Unify is doing. Like, just... Okay, just give me thirty five ringgit a month. Yes, right? and then just give me, me to, uh, unlimited uh, yeah. to do five G. But thirty five ringgit a month add on, on prepaid is a lot of money. I mean, just don't do add on. Just create a create as a new plan. And then we have Maxis. Yes, what's the, going on with Maxis? So Maxis is the only telco that hasn't signed the access agreement. Mm. So on a day when everyone announced that oh we're going to launch five G blah 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 mm. blah blah, um, Maxis issued a statement that they are committed to launch five G, mm. but then still assessing the governance requirements of the agreement yep. because they feel that I think there's a lot of uh, questions that are yet to be answered so yep. they haven't signed it yet. They issued another statement through mm. Bursa, um, Chaos Law Exchange, saying that, you know, um, based on what they've, they've assessed and all that stuff, um, it is mandatory for them to get the shareholders' approval before they can sign this before agreement. Before they move forward, yep. yeah. And they're expecting to settle this by January 2023. So, uh, if we read between the lines, I think Maxis has been very consistent with their stance. They are having none of this, actually. Mm -hmm. They are not agreeable to, number one, the locked-in pricing of 10 years for whatever that price uh, range is. Um, but I think they put it quite nicely to say that okay, you know, they are still they still have to answer to their shareholders, shareholders, and they still have to do their due diligence and governance and stuff like that. And it's not a decision that they're going to make really quickly or hastily, which is interesting because 
the four other telcos suddenly signed the agreement without any filing or I don't know whether any due diligence was done. It wasn't mentioned. It's just like, okay, we're ready to go. Okay, speaking of, since you mentioned that, right? Okay, mm. I'm just looking at uh, Bursa from Asiata. Asiata is the main holding company of Cellcom. Uh, Cellcom. So uh, under Section 7 here, approval mm. slash consent required, mm. uh, it's mentioned here that the agreement is not subject to the approval of shareholders Asiata or any other government authorities. However, in view of the recurring nature of the transactions under agreement, which will arise periodically in the course of three years from its signing and being transaction of revenue nature necessary for the day-to-day business of Cellcom, mm. Asiata intends, if applicable, uh, to seek its shareholders' approval for a mandate for this reoccurring related party transactions at the general meeting yeah, to be Yeah, so they have a safety net yes. there. Um, yeah. So that's, that's interesting as well because the other uh, operator that has been holding out is uh, Cellcom. Mm-hmm. And we were surprised that they signed as well. Yep. Now that it's interesting that they also have a safety net in a way that, okay, if after the free trial period, they have to start paying, they have to go back to their shareholders and also do their due diligence before any transaction can happen. Yeah, so it's like a moving, this whole argument looks like a moving target, right? Okay, you sign first, we discuss the rest later, discuss later. Yeah, 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 so yeah. it looks like Max is trying to be cautious, like, okay, let's sort out everything one shot. Yeah, I think yeah. Max is, is the one that has the biggest cojones when it comes to this because they didn't bend backwards and they didn't sign despite the, like I mentioned, the coercing by, you know, different parties for all the telcos to sign. Because at the end of the day, this is kind of like a happy ending story for the government to say that oh, they've managed to make this happen. Again, this is not a political blog, uh, not a, sorry, not a political podcast, and we're not a political platform. But it, sometimes it's quite s- difficult to separate the two. And you know, 5G has been a, a big point of contention. A bi- uh, 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 I would go so far as a political tool for people who are currently uh, in the government uh, to kind of make good news stories out of this. Um, on the flip side, this can also be a, a distraction. It can be like a problem for them because as you, as you know, we've been talking about this, the 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 many things uh, like the the pricing and all that that's been locked in right raises question on whether this is this a a project for the people or is this a money making machine for peop- for for those who are in power to to benefit from although we don't have the answers but you know it seems suspect so uh, i w- i would i want to just give kudos to maxis for holding to their guns and waiting until january 2023 which is like months after the election yep. to make a decision. Yeah, anything can happen anyway. So yeah, yeah what's the rush? Yeah. yeah, you know, we don't know. If a new government forms, uh, then we could be dissolved uh, for all we know. Um, yeah, and like any other infrastructure projects, right? Things may change after a new government. 